A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, through Jesus, let us continually offer God a sacrifice of praise, that is, the fruit of the lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have. God is pleased by sacrifice of that kind. Obey your leaders and defer to them, for they keep watch over you and will have the, to give an account that they may fulfill their task with joy and not with sorrow, for that will be of no advantage to you. May the God of peace, who brought out from the dead the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, Jesus our Lord, furnish you with all that is good, that you may do his will. May he carry out in you what is pleasing to him through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Verbum Domini. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In green pastures he gives me repose. Besides restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. He guides me in right path for his name's sake. Even though I walk in dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side. With your rod and your staff, that gives me courage. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Only goodness and kindness shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord is my shepherd, there is nothing I shall want. Sancti Vangeli secundo Marco. Gloria ti The apostles gathered together with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away by yourselves to a deserted place and rest a while. People were coming and going in great numbers, and they had no opportunity even to eat. So they went off in the boat by themselves to a deserted place. People saw them leaving, and many came to know about it. They hastened there on foot from all the towns and arrived at the place before them. When Jesus disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them. For they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. Verbum Domini. Let's 
It's getting serious when you don't have time to eat, right? You know you have to put the brakes on. And I think it's a good word to all people, especially in ministry. You know, people's needs are real. And we try to love people and do what we can. But I remember being struck one time that the Holy Father was doing a question and answer with a group of priests in St. Peter's Square. And he says, he said, we have to make a decision about what we can do. You know, the important thing he was telling these priests is that people have to realize, you know, your love for them and they respect human limits. You know, there's physical limitations to what a person can do. We can't do everything. There are certain limitations. And we have to respect that, our humanity in that sense. We're told today that the apostles gathered with Jesus and reported all they had done and taught. We just had the, the passage about the death of John the Baptist, but right before that, Jesus sends out the 12 you know, and tells them to, uh, what to carry for the journey and tells them to go out and preach a message of repentance. So they come back and they're excited and I'm sure weary and tired from their work and they're talking with Jesus and he t- tells them, you know, come away to a deserted place and rest a while. That we need that physical rest. And even more importantly, or just as important, I would say, that we need a spiritual rest as well. And we see that that's very, that reality, that need is built into creation. God's, you know, days of creation we hear about in Genesis is built into that. That we're, we see that on the seventh day, God calls man to rest. That Creation, we could say, finds its completion and its participation in resting in God, that that's uh, the goal of all creation, right? This communion, this relationship with God that we're called to. It's built in, right? It's built into the seven days of creation. The seventh day he rested is built into that whole creative act of God. It's not something added on. It's intrinsic to it, that we find this rest in God. It's a place where as Benedict has said, that we can communicate, where he can communicate his love to us and we can respond in love to him, you know, in return. It's a time to encounter him or to cultivate our relationship with God, to be regenerated in that relationship with God. We see if you take that spiritual component out of our lives, you know, and we just get very busy and we all know the frenetic pace of life today, how we can pack so much into our days. You know, remember the, the blackberries that we could schedule our days. I remember I had a guest on Life on the Rock and she described it as crackberry, right? Because it's like the drug of crack cocaine and we can get this hit, you know, this adrenaline rush from being so active and so being. Uh, we could focus on having instead of being and just do one activity after another. And we see our society is almost built upon this, that without this real inner fulfillment, we have this emptiness and it can just offer stuff to us to consume and to experience, right? And we can have this endless pursuit of new experiences, finding more and more exciting and extreme things to do. And the ultimate conclusion of that is is just, you know, the addictive culture that we live in today. And if we want to come out of that, we have to find a real spiritual connection with God, right? We get overcome, we can get addicted, and and the healing and recovery from that always has to have a spiritual component that we find God what we're truly seeking. I recently listened to an interview with a, a food expert on the radio, and he was talking about you know, the obesity problems and things. And he talked about how so much of our American system, the food is engineered with sugar and fat and salt and things to just, these are things that are so prevalent in our diet and they're there because it quickly stimulates us, quickly gives us an experience and it's, you know, people can sell us more and more of it. And he said something interesting. He said, if we're always living on that stimulated level, we're not living on a level where we're truly satisfied, you know, with real and wholesome food that can nourish us. And I thought that's an image of the whole culture, right? We can stay on a very 
shallow, superficial level of stimulation and not finding the real, not finding a real nourishing life. Jesus is that real fulfillment. He is the place, we could say, where we find a, a true rest that's restorative and regenerative. And we're told today that even when they pull back to this deserted place, the crowds followed them. And Jesus, again, took time and taught them. He was moved with pity. That's a beautiful image of a shepherd's heart, right? He sees them as sheep without a shepherd, and he has this pastoral charity, this love for people, and he comforts the crowd, and he teaches them. And that's a good lesson for all of us in ministry or anything. You know, every, every person is supposed to serve the Lord and offer their family life, their work up to God. And sometimes we can think that it's, it's all up to us. And that's really exhausting, right? If I believe I have the entire burden, I can't carry the burden, right? And we see that we have to turn it over to the Lord. He's the one that's caring and loving his flock. He's the one that in us needs to love people, right? So we need to turn that over to him and, and really let him take care of it. We show up and do our part and work and do the best we can but Jesus is the ultimate answer, right? That's where we're trying to lead people to. How do we find this rest today, practically speaking? I know maybe we have somebody listening, they have a very busy family life, they're caring for children. I've certainly heard that a lot in talking to couples, right? There's just so many demands that the children and work presents. You know, how do we practically find this rest? I think the answer is a real prayer life, right? No matter how it looks, you might not have large blocks of time to give to the Lord, but maybe just moments in the day, you know, we can turn to him and find this rest. You know, John of the Cross described contemplative prayer as, you know, that we preserve a loving attentiveness to God with no desire to feel or understand any particular thing concerning God. Right, that was at the heart of contemplative prayer, not so much seeking this knowledge and things and understanding about God, not about, as Teresa of Avila would say, not about thinking much, but loving much, this loving attentiveness to God. You know, how do we cultivate that? How do we have that? I was recently reading a, a spiritual book on prayer, and he says, you know, first we must grow still, right, which is so hard for us. You know, we can get caught up, this writer said, in, in, in interior dialogues, right, in obsessive thinking. That the intellect is always active, you know, and at work, and is chasing down thoughts, and then coming up with commentaries about the thoughts, right? It's a real distraction in prayer, and some of us have a real difficulty with meditation. And there's a, a beautiful tradition, I think, especially in Eastern monasticism, uh, that speaks of, you know, in our prayer time, using like a prayer word, a short phrase that is repeated, that we could be some phrase from scripture. You know, we could say like today, I mean, I was thinking about it, you could say like, rest in me. That's what Jesus is telling us today. Come away to a de deserted place. You know, come be with me, rest in me. You know, we could just quietly to ourselves repeat this phrase to us, or just the name, right, the divine name, Jesus, or my yoke is easy, or I trust in you. There's a beautiful phrase, Mother Teresa, a prayer she would like to say would, you know, Mary, be a mother to me now. Right, you think about Mary radiates the, the very tenderness of God. We live in a harsh and fast-paced world. We have different, maybe, wounds, family of origin, difficulty, struggles that we have. Mary can help us to heal that. Mary, be a mother to me now. Or some form of the Jesus prayer. Or Jesus, Son of the living God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Or just Jesus, have mercy on me. And we can repeat that to ourselves and, and the spiritual writers tell us to even time it with our breathing. You know, that can help bring us back to this prayer, help us to focus and very powerful way to, I think, help, an aid to get rid of distractions and to uh, refocus us. Many times, you know, I've sat down with prayer 
had my formula for meditation and everything and didn't make it past the third step, right? Because <laughs> I was off to some, something mentally, you know, some, something else. And this was so simple and helped to focus us on the Lord. You know, being, you know, experiencing the depths of that present moment with God and letting him fill us. That's the rest we crave. It takes the burden off of us, right? We take on his yoke. And then we can really be of help to people, right? We can really uh, serve them and love them uh, with the very love of Christ in a much deeper way.